I've got six affordable open ear style buds with me here today, and I'm going to test them all to show you what the under $100 market has to offer. Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. When it comes to wireless earbuds, 2023 is definitely the year of the open ear design. The market just got flooded with loads and loads of different options as of late. And while I have already tested most, if not all premium offerings out there, I have been neglecting the lower end segment of the market. So today I'm going to fix it by showing you some affordable alternatives, each costing less than $100. Now let's stop mincing words and see the earbuds themselves. Strictly in alphabetical order, we start with the One More Fit SE S30. It comes in at $70 as of making this video, but depending on when and where you are watching it, you might be able to get it for even less. And that last bit probably applies to all buds discussed here today, but you can always check out the links in the description for actual prices. Back to the S30, in a typical One More fashion, the all plastic design is very sleek with these large and glossy touch panels on the sides. So if there was a beauty pageant, the One More buds would definitely win it. But maybe more importantly, the build quality is also well above average in its class, and in fact it's one of the best in this group. The buds weigh 9.9 grams each, and that also makes them one of the most lightweight of the bunch. The comfort is excellent with no hotspots around the ear hooks, and the fit is snug enough for running, and you can also feel safe during your everyday workouts, as the S30 got an IPX5 rating, which makes them sweat, rain and splash proof. The battery case is the smallest of them all, but it's still considered kind of big and it's only easy to carry around in larger pockets. Popping the lid open is easy, but the hinge could be a touch stronger to stop it from flopping. It's ok as long as you keep the case flat, but the minute you tilt it a bit towards you, the lid will close unless you give it some support with one of your fingers. The batteries in the S30s last up to 10 hours on a single charge, and the case can provide you with two full charges, bringing the total playtime up to 30 hours. There is a USB Type-C charging port on the back of the case, with no wireless charging support built in. And while the S30s are my favorite as far as design, our next contender, the One Audio Open Rock S, can be crowned as the earbuds with the best build quality, but considering their $90 price tag, which is the highest in this group by far, it's somewhat expected. However, their design is only second best due to their heavier weight and the much larger carry case. The buds look sleek and they inherited the adjustable ear hook design from their more expensive sibling, the Open Rock Pro. In my case it results in a rock solid fit, which makes these buds my favorite as far as fit is concerned. The comfort is also top notch and we get the IPX5 level of waterproofing here, so whether you use the Open Rock S for short but intense workouts in the gym or for all day long activities outside, you are covered. And boy you are covered with that 19 hours of single charge playtime, let alone the 60 hours you get in total with the case. And it means that we got our endurance champion of this comparison as well, so you will hardly ever need the 5 minute quick charge for that one extra hour of use. But just in case you do, it's there too. The massive battery can only fit in a huge carry case, so that's a downside, but at least the hinge on the lid is solid with a hard stop, providing easy flop free access to the buds. You can find the USB Type-C port on the back, but you cannot find wireless charging support no matter how hard you look. Next up are the Sivga S01 buds, which cost 70 bucks. The plastic they used for both the buds and the carry case feels a bit cheap and the design is a bit uninspired too, but the build quality is ok for the money. The S01 buds weigh in at 11.6 grams each, and while that puts them on the heavier side of the scale, I have to say that these are more comfortable to wear in the long run than I thought they would be. I was first skeptical because the use of the not so high quality hard plastics, but then I realized that the ear hooks have a rotatable hinge, so you can dial in the fit and the tightness perfectly. So the S01 is secure and comfortable for most activities, thanks to the adjustable ear hooks, and the IPX5 rating makes them lifting in the gym proof and running in the rain proof too. The only caveat is that you have to set the ear hooks back into the neutral position before storing them away after each use, as otherwise they won't fit in the rather huge carry case. The hinge on the lid can hardly handle its weight, so we get the most flop rich opening experience, which is a touch annoying. But the case overall is not all that bad. 
In fact, this is the only case in the group where we get Qi wireless charging support and you can also find a small battery status LED inside, which can give you an exact percentage of how much charge is left in the battery case. Speaking of which, the total playtime is 46 hours, while the earbuds themselves can last up to 9 hours. Onto the True Free 01, these are one of the cheaper options in the group with their price of only $60. However, as you will see later on, that does not stop them from being one of the most feature packed, but more about it in a second. The earbuds weigh in at 9.9 grams each, and that's the same as the one more, so the most lightweight title is shared between these two. And I would also rate these as one of the most comfortable too, thanks to the well-balanced weight distribution and the somewhat flexible ear hooks. But while there is nothing wrong with the build quality and the overall design itself is okay too, I find both the One More and the One Audio a touch more handsome and better built too. Plus, the IPX4 rating provides the True Free Buds with a slightly inferior protection against the elements too. That said, with their low price in mind, it's all spot on. The carry case is the biggest of them all, but the hinge is well dampened and it also comes to a hard stop at the fully open position, so that's a positive. The 45 hours of total playtime is average in this group, and so is the 10 hours you can squeeze out from the buds themselves. The USB Type-C charging port can be found at the back, but there is no wireless charging or quick charging. And our last two contenders will not come in a carry case, as both of them come with a neckband instead. I thought I would include these two in this comparison, as I know that many people prefer having a wraparound neck design for the most secure fit. So let's see the $60 Soundbeats run free first. In terms of its design, we got some flashy bits such as the outside of the speaker units and the head unit behind your ears, but where it matters, it's all soft silicone. The neckband, the ear hooks around the speakers and behind the controls too. The weight is a hefty 31 grams, but that's okay considering the neckband. Build quality is only okay, as the headphones feel a bit flimsy, but the long-term comfort is excellent, and even if the fit is not super snug, it's secure enough for most casual indoor and outdoor activities. And whatever activity you end up doing with the run free, you can do it all day long, thanks to the 14 hours of battery life. We got no battery case, so you will have to use the USB Type-C port on the control unit of the headphones for charging. It is hidden behind a silicone cover, and that's why we probably got an IPX4 rating only, because that charging port is not completely sealed off. Not that it is a problem, as IPX4 is perfectly acceptable, as you still get protection against sweat and rain. But that's where the proprietary magnetic charger of the Tozo open rear comes into play, because the lack of ports and the perfect sealing make the IPX8 full waterproof rating possible. So you don't have to worry about dropping the Tozo headphones in water at all, and you can easily rinse them under tap water after a messy workout. And even though you will have to take this special charging cable with you everywhere if you want to charge the buds during your travels, the 16 hours of single charge playtime might prove to be long enough if you happen to leave the cable at home. As long as you got the cable at hand though, you will also get a 10 minute quick charge feature, which can yield 2 hours of extra use. And most surprisingly, the open reel retails for about 50 bucks only, which makes them the most affordable of the bunch. For this money, you not only get the best IP rating and quick charging, but also a titanium headband, a solid build quality and a cool design. I especially like the fact that Tozo did not use glossy bits on the headphones. But the silicone coating on the ear hooks and on the headband is not as soft to the touch as it is on the sound beats. I also found the ear hooks a bit too tight, which on one hand gives you a snug fit, but on the other hand it can potentially cause some comfort issues in the long run. The weight is practically the same as that of the run free, so there is no difference between the two in that regard. And before we get on to discuss some practical use cases, quick disclaimer. I've got each of the bots from their respective manufacturer for this comparison, but none of them paid me for making this video, nor did they have any influence on the contents of this review. Now, on with some use cases, let's see cycling. First, with the neckband designs, you will have to keep in mind that bike helmets have all sorts of retention systems and straps, which can get in the way, but I got lucky with my gear, as I could use both headphones easily. Not that I had the chance to take the buds out for a proper spin due to the cold weather, so I can only demonstrate it in the studio, but as you can see, both the sound beats and the Tozo is compatible with my helmet and sunglasses. Onto running, the sound peats gave me more wind noise than the Tozo, so that can be an issue on the bike as well at higher speeds. 
As for the other four earbuds with no neckband, they are all safe and secure to be used on the road due to their snug fit and the open air design, so whether you are cycling, running or hiking, each and every one of these buds can get the job done for you. That said, the OpenRock S and the Sivga SO1 both come with adjustable ear hooks, so that makes them a touch more flexible when it comes to fitting different ear shapes and ear sizes. I only took the earbuds to the gym to see if they can pass the downward dock test, which they did, but the open air design might not be the best option for gym use overall due to the loud music coming from the speakers in most gyms. Next, let's talk about connectivity. All buds use Bluetooth version 5.3 and all of them support both the SBC and the AAC audio codecs. The only one with LDAC on board is the True 301 and these $60 buds also support multipoint use and come with a 60 milliseconds low latency game mode. The only other earbuds that can offer multipoint and the game mode are the sound pits, but you cannot find LDAC there. So I guess the True 3 is the winner here with two caveats. First, you cannot use LDAC and multipoint together, and second, the True 3 is the only one where I experienced momentarily signal cutoffs and some connection issues here and there, regardless of the settings, while all the other five provided me with solid signals throughout my tests. So while we got advanced features, the wireless connection is not the most stable. I had no lip sync issues with any of the buds when watching videos, but thanks to its low latency game mode, the True 3 is the only one that can get in under 100 milliseconds, while all others linger around the usual 200 milliseconds mark. And that includes the sound pits too, which has a game mode, but it doesn't seem to be doing much when turned on. So gamers, you must pay attention to the True 301. And so do LDAC fans and multipoint users. And before we move on to some mic samples, there is also the single bud mode we have to discuss. It is of course supported on all four, where the individual use of the buds is physically possible, but not on the two with the neckband obviously. The switch between the buds is smooth in all cases, but what's even more interesting is that the Sivga SO1 can be turned on and off individually using their buttons, so we don't necessarily have to take the large carry case with us on all day long trips. The True Free can do the same trick, but again, you can run into some mishaps when turning the buds back on, so it's not as reliable as the Sivga. The OpenRock S buds can only be turned off together, but you can turn each of them back on separately, and you will need the case for the One More S30 to be powered on and off. Now, let's get on with those audio samples I promised before. Starting with the One More Fit S30, we got four microphones in total on the two earbuds, and we also get an AI algorithm to have to noise. So this is the phone call quality you can expect on a fairly windy day such as today with some traffic noise in the background. Next up are the One Audio Open Rock S earbuds, which also come with four microphones and an AI noise cancelling algorithm. So this is the audio quality you get when you happen to make a phone call with these earbuds when you are well. Moving on to the Sivga SO1, we only get two microphones with these earbuds, so this is the audio quality you can expect when making the phone call on the side of a fairly busy road on a sunny day like this today with a slight breeze turning the mix. Now let's hear what phone call quality we can expect from the two microphones in the the same conditions as before, so it's not traffic in the background. Okay. Next, this is the audio sample from the four built-in microphones on the one. We get environmental noise cancellation to deal with noises such as the traffic behind me. So this is the phone call quality you get from these earbuds in a station. And as for our last test today, this is how the two microphones on board of the Tozo Open Wheel headphones can pick up my voice with some traffic in the background on a slightly later day. When it comes to controlling your media playback and phone calls, these earbuds could hardly be more different from one another. The One More, the True Free and the One Audio use touch panels, the Sivga and the Soundpeats have physical buttons, while the Tozo Open Reel have both. With the One More S30, we got a remappable double and triple tap action, which is less than ideal given that there are six basic functions we should be able to control. Play, pause, volume up and down, track forward and backward and ideally voice control as well. 
out of these six, you can always have any four set up across the two touch panels, but not all six at the same time. What I like, however, is that said touch panels are large and they register taps quickly and accurately all the time. The OpenRock S adds tap and hold to the double and triple tap, but we don't get volume controls at all, and there is no app in which you could change these settings either. However, if we tap and hold both bots for 2 seconds, we can switch between rock and relax modes, which are two different EQ settings. Reaction times are a bit slower here than on the S30, but the touch panels work accurately. The True Free comes with single, double, triple tap and tap and hold, which allows you to control all six basic functions including volume, and you can also activate the game mode from the bots. The controls work with prompt reaction times, but they are not remappable, however you can disable them all in the app with a switch. Onto the Sivga, these are the only bots with physical buttons and with all the pressing actions and functions on the menu. It's only that the buttons are cheap and stiff and they hardly give you any tactile feedback, so loads of times you don't exactly know how many times you pressed on the button already. Plus they are a bit uncomfortable to use, especially the long press on the left hand side, where I have to push the hard plastic against my ears with a substantial force for the button to register the action, which is anything but pleasant. There is no smartphone app either, so customization is off the table with the Sivga. The Soundbeats Run Free comes with three physical buttons, all of which are located at the back of the head unit on the right hand side. It's not the most comfortable to use these buttons, as you need to hold onto the head unit with two fingers to support the pressing action and to keep the headphones in place. Other than that, it works okay, and we got all the media controls including volume. The only thing missing is voice control activation through these buttons, and while we got an app, the controls are not customizable. And the same can be said about the Tozo Open Reel. What's different here is that beside the multifunctional physical button at the bottom of the head unit, we also got a touch panel on the right speaker unit. And with the exception of voice control activation, we got all the media controls shared between these two. The location of the multifunctional button is much better than on the sound beats, but I found them a touch too small for optimal use. The touch panel up front works perfectly well though, and at the end of the day, so do the buttons. None of the six buds in this test have wear sensors or smart sensors, so automatic play and pause is nowhere to be found. And since we already touched upon the topic of smartphone apps, let's see those next. With the exception of the Sivga SO1 and the One Audio Open Rock S, we got app support with the buds. And there are two main features that all four have in common. First, of course you can upgrade the firmware of your earbuds in all four, it's pretty basic. What's not so basic, however, is the equalizer we got in each. One more offers no presets, but a 10 band manual EQ where you can save and store three different profiles at once. Soundpeats have nine presets and an 8 band manual EQ with one single custom profile you can save, but you also get an adaptive EQ option where the app runs a hearing test to optimize the sound of the headphones. The True Free app can do the same, I mean running a hearing test, but it also comes with 9 presets and a 10 band manual equalizer, where you can save multiple profiles of your own. Then there is the Tozo app, which offers 16 presets, each being customizable, using the 10 band manual EQ, and you can save multiple of these tweaked sound profiles too. Now let's see what other features you can find in these apps. Interestingly enough, 3 out of the 4 apps give you an ASMR feature, with the one exception being the sound beats. The most appealing here is the Tozo with plenty of sound samples and a good bunch of settings. My least favorite here is the one more as the short couple of seconds long samples keep jumping and repeating themselves, which sort of defeats the purpose of relaxing sounds in my opinion. The true free ASMR is somewhere between the other two with a few sounds but no further settings. And while the Sound Beats app has no built-in ASMR feature, it has a game mode switch, even if it doesn't do much in my experience. The same game mode switch however can make a difference in the True Free app when it comes to gaming, and it also has a dual device connection switch and the touch control kill switch. The Tozo app has no extra features besides what we already discussed, and neither does the One More app, unless you count the Smart Burn-In or the Quick Guide as truly useful features. And now let's move on to sound quality. Each and every one of these guys are equipped with a large 16.2mm dynamic driver, except for the One More S30, which sports slightly smaller but still large 14.2mm transducers. 
Not that it stops the S30 from delivering a punchy bass, as only the Tozo can give you a more powerful bottom end with better extension. The S30 and the Run Free are very similar as far as their kick and power in the lower octaves. The Open Rock S is slightly behind these two, and while the True 301 has a very clean and well controlled bass, it's a bit lacking in terms of depth and heft. And while the Sivga may go deeper than any of the other buds, the bottom end is muddy and distorted regardless of volume, while all the others have a more or less clean output even at higher volumes. The Tozo Open Reel and the Sound Peats Run Free can pull off a clean, distortion-free bass without dialing it back at even maximum volume. On the Sivga, the bass disappears as soon as we pull up the volume, while on the One More S30, the bass gets pulled down a bit less aggressively, but the highs become quite dominant, making the buds sound a bit too bright up top. On the Open Rock S, only a little shift is noticeable in the sound at full volume, and the True Free has quite a lean bass to begin with, so there is no need to pull anything down to avoid distortions. And one thing I noticed is that for example the True 301 has more bass at or close to maximum volume than does the S30, which is quite the opposite to what you can experience at more moderate output levels. And before we move up to the mid-range, one side note. I used the default or the flat EQ setting on all of the bots where EQ is available, and I used the rock mode on the one audio, as the relax mode simply takes away the bass, which doesn't sound that good at all. Now onto the mid-range. The One More S30 takes home an easy win here, as far as clarity and resolution. And even though I like such a prominent presence in this range, I feel like the mids are lifted a little too much for most people's taste. The Tozo is warm across the mid-range, and so is the Open Rock S and the True Free, all three being closer to what's considered a popular tuning, rich but slightly pulled down mids with great tonality. The Sound Peats Run Free takes it one step further, making the mids sound the tiniest bit boxy, and while the Sivga has a nicely presented midrange across the board, the muddy upper bass bleeds into the lower mids, making vocals sound a bit chesty. As far as high frequency energy, sparkle and extension, we get the most of it from the One More S30. These are easily the most airy and detailed sounding but too. But again, at higher volumes, you may find them a touch too bright. The Sound Peats and the True Free are toned down in comparison when it comes to the higher frequencies, giving you a fairly balanced sound across the range. Then come the Tozo and the One Audio, both of which are a bit too closed in with a rolled off treble, while the Sivga is probably the darkest sounding with a lacking extension up top. In terms of maximum volume, the Sivga is last, followed by the Open Rock S and the One More S30. The Sound Peats Run Free, the True 301 and the Tozo Open Reel are the three loudest with only marginal differences between the three. And the amount of sound leakage we get from each is kind of in line with their maximum output too, so that's something you have to keep in mind. Imaging is most precise on the S30 and the Tozo, and probably I would pick either of these two for the best overall sound. As far as hissing or white noise is concerned, I found it the most noticeable on the Open Rock S and on the Sound Peats Run 3, while the other four are more or less the same as in they are all very quiet. Now, as always, I find it pretty challenging when it comes to ranking the overall performance of these earbuds, as I know that personal preferences and priorities in terms of features can greatly vary, but let's see what I can do here. And first, the easy part, the two guys with a neckband, which is a distinctive feature of its own, so if you think you need one, these are the two to choose from. I prefer the tight and sleek design of the Tozo Open Reel, they offer a longer battery life, a much better IP rating, a more sophisticated app, more comfortable controls and a touch more powerful sound. However, you will have to deal with the proprietary magnetic charging cable instead of using USB-C with the sound pits. But still, if you need a neckband, Tozo is the way to go in my opinion. However, if you want true wireless earbuds, that's a bit more complicated. You need the most compact and lightweight package, take the One More Fit SES30, and you will also get the most handsome set which has the most premium feel too, along with one of the most enjoyable and detailed sound signatures. You want the best build quality along with some adjustability sprinkled in, or you need the longest battery life, well, in both cases, the One Audio Open Rock S is your best bet. 
you will get a less sophisticated sound and you will have to deal with the large carry case, but at least you won't need it at all the time as the bot can be used and turned on and off without it. And let's not forget that these are the most expensive too. Ok, what's next? You want wireless charging or maybe physical buttons instead of touch controls? Either way, your only option is the Sivga S01. You will have to give up app support and maybe you get the least premium feel, but the features are there. Speaking of which, are you a feature junkie and you need the longest spec sheet there is? Well, the True Free 01 is your BFF then. The potent mix of LDAC, multipoint and the low latency game mode does not only make these earbuds the most versatile across all use case scenarios, but it also makes them the best in terms of absolute value in this price bracket. And hoping that the iffy connection can somehow be fixed through firmware and considering that in this price range the actual value you get for your money is king, I would probably pick these buds myself. The O1 also sounds almost as good at higher volumes as my runner-up, the One More S30, and they are almost as comfortable as my bronze medalist, the Open Rock S. So True Free really got you covered with the O1 across the board. And that was my take on the best open earbuds under $100. I know you probably have loads of questions, so fire away and let's continue the discussion in the comments down below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe as it would help the channel big time. You can also help the channel by checking out the affiliate links in the description. You never know, you may find a deal on Amazon we can both benefit from. But whether you do any of these things or not, I appreciate your support as watching the video at this point probably means that you sat through the whole thing, which again, had the channel big time. And even if you just watched this last bit, thanks for doing so, and I hope to see you all in the next one too.